Dan and Daisy. We work with um, Terumo, Terumo Corporation. Um, we're going to present a customer case about uh, process mining with uh, QPR. So we're uh, working for um, Terumo Corporation, which is a Japanese company, uh, medical devices company, headquartered in Tokyo, um, globally active. About 5 billion euro in sales by now across the world. Uh, so we're focusing on, on creating and um, f uh, yeah, building and selling medical devices. So we, uh, whatever we do, it's around a hospital. So we've got three major business units. The first and biggest one, everything to do with um, <coughs> interventional surgery. So if you need a stent, your arteries are blocking, then you need some high-tech um, devices like the one on top. Um, you've got machines that help you do surgery, like um, they reroute blood or oxygen or uh, all sorts of complicated uh, products. And then everything that has to do with blood donation and blood storage. Um, so those are the three, three biggest um, business units we have. So um, we, Daisy and myself, we are from um, Terumo Europe, which is about 20% of the, the global business. Uh, that we're our, our own region and we're in the IT department. So uh, one of our strategic objectives is we call it information on tap. So what we do is we aim to provide business intelligence or insights, whatever you want to call it, to the business. So to fulfill that strategy, we started an IT innovation project. So it's purely originating from IT. It's IT for IT, we call it. So without the ex expression need from the business. So we started it and we said, okay, we're going to do process mining um, as, a, as, a, as a project, standalone. So we selected um, as a partner and as a technological provider of QPR and we did a proof of value and decided to kick off the project. So that was in Jan of this year, Jan, Feb, somewhere um, in the middle of Jan. And in March, we did um, the first workshop. So the, the setup was around two workshops. We did two two-day workshops. The first one was around data model creation. So we pulled the data out of our ERP system, QPR as standard translation um, models that allow you to build the QPR data model. And we provided in expertise around processes and systems to be able to do the mapping. The second workshop, also two days, one month later, we finalized the model and we built the, the KPIs and the dashboarding, which is also part of the, the process mining uh, scope. So we have the data model and we have KPIs and dashboarding. And in May, the 1st of May, we and brought it live, meaning it's refreshed daily, so the system pulls data and everything's updated automatically. We give you access to the users, we give access to the colleagues in IT, and everybody is able to work with QPR. So we did that in three months' time. So the, like the, the way we operated the project and how we balance between QPR and um, Terumo was also one of the questions on the previous presentation is so QPR has the like uh, a ready package which they allow you to transfer Q, uh, ERP data into a model so it's like an auto mapping but yeah it's not off the shelf uh, it's off the shelf but <coughs> there's always special things that you need to steer for example we have in our procurement to pay process, which we do in process mining, we have 17 approvals for a PO, 17, the maximum. If you would visualize all of those, you get the spaghetti if you showed. So we, we chose to do visualize the first and the last, and that it's still manageable. So that's the, the, the type of work that you have to do as your own company uh, alongside QPR, which is an important part. For the similar for the KPIing and the dashboarding, we come up with the definitions and, and all of that. So to add to that, we do P2P and OTC as well, the two. Um, and, and those are our two processes on process mining. Um, another example is, yeah, 
if you do a return to vendor flow that is free of charge, it's completely different than the rest of your P2P flow. If you don't provide that input as a as a as as IT or as a project member from the company side, yeah, you cannot use it. If you have a different way of taking in sales orders from an automated flow, you have an EDI way of getting in sales orders, or you have a customer care agent answering the phone. Those two are completely different. If you want to know when the order is created, you need to be able to identify that one side of the flow uses that and the other that. If you don't do that, you're having DDT in the in the system. So that's what, what we did. And an example is what Daisy is going to explain. So uh, what I would like to show you is uh, just a business case of process mining. What process mining uh, can do for you? What can be the benefits of, of um, having process mining? So um, we can have a look at KPIs. Uh, how well are we performing? We can do a duration analysis with QP, uh, QPR. So how long does our process take? And we can do like a flow chart and how efficient are we working? So if um, you enter QPR, uh, this is our dashboard. So um, Seam has already indicated. So we have two models, our order to cash and our procure to pay. So here we have the flow charts and here, oh, sorry. <laughs> And I think it's this, yeah. And here we have our dashboards, so where we have defined our KPIs. Uh, so if we select now the order to cash dashboard, uh, these are all the KPIs we have defined. Uh, for example, we have defined the lead times, how long does it take between delivery and invoice creation. We have defined um, how many claims we have on our sales orders. We have defined on-time payments. We have defined our service levels. So um, how well are we performing? Uh, when are we actually delivering the goods to our customer compared to when they have requested? Uh, so you also see that we have filters uh, on top of it. So we can um, make a distinguishment between um, the, the kind of sales order we have. Is it an EDI? Is it a normal sales order? Is it an export sales order? Um, and we can also indicate uh, do we want to see it for all the months or do we want to have a month uh, a particular month so if you now would um, for example select this KPI then you will have the following chart huh? so you can see the monthly evolution of your KPIs uh, so now uh, I have selected the requested delivery date versus the actual delivery date and you can see uh, for our company that we had a drop in the month of June. Uh, so then uh, by analyzing your KPIs or following up your KPIs, you can see, can I find a root cause? Uh, why is there a drop in June? Uh, so if I continue this business case uh, and I see now, um, I will see now if I can find also with the information that's in QPR, uh, is what is the root cause for, for this drop? Um, so then we come to the duration analysis, uh, so how long does our process take? I go back to my main screen and I select the order to cash flow chart. Uh, if you select this, then you will indeed see all your events uh, you have defined. Uh, you have defined in the order to cash model, sales order creation, delivery creation, proof of delivery, invoice creation, and so on. Uh, so here, now I have only selected uh, three events related to my KPI. Uh, so I have selected my sales order item creation, my delivery creation, and my proof of delivery. And I have indicated the duration between the several events. So what I saw is that I had a drop in the month uh, June. So if I now only select my sales orders of the month of June, I see uh, which confirms my drop in KPI that in this particular month, my duration was much longer. Uh, so instead, if you compare both, uh, if I take all months together, it's about one hour and 22 minutes. If I only take my month June, then I see it's like 22 hours, so it's much longer. Uh, so a next thing you can do with QPR is to see what could be the root cause. Uh, what could be the root, co 
cause for this longer duration between sales order and delivery creation. Uh, so here you can switch to a kind of duration analysis. Uh, and if you go there, then what will happen? You will um, distribute your sales order according to their duration. Uh, for example, you see here that most of our sales orders are created within one day. Uh, but we do have sales order for which it takes 10 days or for which it even takes 20 days before we have the delivery created. Uh, so what you can do next is you can say, okay, I want to make um, a comparison between two groups. So you can indicate th these groups in QPR. So here I have selected my blue group are the sales order items which have a duration less than 10 days and my yellow group is like my sales order items which have a duration more than 10 days and then i can ask qpr is there an attribute is there something that influences my sales order why they would be in uh, the yellow or the blue group Okay, so if I have done that, huh, then you will have here a kind of root cause analysis. Uh, and in my example, uh, um, we see that product allocation has a negative influence on the duration. So if a product is under product allocation, I'm more likely to be in the yellow group, uh, which is kind of logic because product allocation means that there's limited supply of this product, which will have, of course, an effect on your duration, which will make it uh, longer between uh, sales order and delivery creation. Uh, so if I then go back to my flowchart and I only select these two events, sales order and delivery creation, then I can compare the duration uh, with the products under product allocation and the products without product allocation and see if that this confirms my uh, root cause analysis. And indeed, as you can see here, it does because for products under product allocation, you see that it takes like four days between sales order and delivery creation. And for products without product allocation, it's only 20 minutes. But yeah, we can even go further. Eh? So then you can make a link between KPI, duration, and root cause. But we can also go to our flow, flow chart and see how efficient are we working now. If I not only select my sales or the delivery proof of delivery, but I select the steps in between sales order and delivery creation, I see that in 71%, I have my perfect flow. In 71%, I go directly from, from, from sales order to delivery. Uh, that's what I want. I don't want anybody to change the sales orders. If I then take, again, those products under product allocation, what I see, I'm less efficient. I only have 66% that follows a perfect flow, uh, which is logic because people need to change it. They need to wait, they need to verify, <coughs> they need to adapt quantities. And if I then see how efficient I'm working for the products without product allocation, then I see I have 78%, meaning that even if I have a good service level, because my delivery is, is fast created, it was only 22 minutes, I see that I don't have 100% efficiency. I still have some deviation on, on my good KPI. So I can also improve by having a good KPI. That was uh, the business case I wanted to present to you. To summarize, we, we, we try to combine KPIs and, and duration analysis because they represent service level and root cause analysis. So you can not only just do how well am I performing, but also why am I not performing, which is already more than just KPIs. And, and we call it, or we, it's called effectiveness then. So, and then if on top, you, you also measure changes versus first time, right? So even if you are performing well, 
are you performing it efficiently well so without changes the 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 right flow then then that's like a cost a cost um driver of the of your process eh? no changes is low cost so if you combine those and you say we do a high service level because we spot the root causes we improve the service level and we do a uh, high efficiency so we spot the changes we see where the changes are we try to eliminate those then you get to the the perfect flow which then is yeah high revenue because of high service level low cost because of low changes so high profit so that's a bit the the the, the idea or the vision we have in in using process mining um but it's not so easy so if we talk a bit about <coughs> The, the lesson what what we what you call lessons learned yeah complexity is is an issue of course in everything it's like the, the same with everybody that tries to do this so we we you need to know you need to be able to have the expertise on the different processes all the exceptions um in switzerland they do a different flow because you have uh, uh, the the extra exports aspect if you don't if you miss that you you could have bad data and it's garbage so you need to be well aware of all those steps but on the other hand yeah don't try to <coughs> do it all right because if you do it all right you get the massive spaghetti so focus on the top flows and don't do your returns for cooled transport coming out of consignment because you only do six of those per year, so why bother? So just keep those out and tell them you don't do those because they will absorb too much um, effort without a lot of added value. So that's that's a bit what we feel that we had to learn that the trade-off versus c all the complexity and still having a workable solution, um, which you could achieve by starting small if you take your main sales flow and you do that and carve it out properly and bring that life, then you can build it on, which we didn't do, but could be a, a <coughs> easier approach to do it. Um, what we are trying to do now, because we've implemented it in May, we are now September, so and the summer has been in between, so now we are trying to um, realize benefits. So like the case that the, the Deji showed is one of the insights we are reaching. But it's an insight to be to be completely honest, which you maybe didn't need QPR to do that insight. So we're trying to use the tool now to find insights and and be able to bring them to the table as facts, not as opinions. Because before we could say product allocation is probably an influencer of service level, probably maybe, and how big? I uh, pff, how, we don't really know how big. Now we know. For a fact, it's that big, it's that percentage of orders, and it takes that much more time. So that's already, even though it's an, a, a conclusion that you could have made in advance, now you have the numbers and you have the, the facts that there's no debate possible about that statement. And we are trying to find more cases like that, and then building the, the traction of changing them. And that's the hardest part, like in all the previous presentations generating the, the the platform for change and building that and that's now our main goal for the coming months to try and drive that change out of IT towards business um, which involves training it's, it's summarized under training but all everything that's <coughs> training and, and change management so so that's that's our summary of our process mining uh, project implementation <coughs>